I mean, will start following the same pattern and that's just going to be a matter of time. So what is this difference is basically, it is no longer important as to what you know. So I do not care if I'm hiring a person. To me, it doesn't matter what a person actually knows. To me, all that it matters is who a person actually is. What is that character trait that I could identify a person X or a person Y with? Is he someone nicer? Do I even want to talk to him? Do I want to sit down and have a coffee with him? So these are all the first questions that actually get into the table. And only when these topics are cleared, you know, people even get into the aspect of even talking about what a person knows or doesn't know. So uh, one of the important aspect is the first topic that I'm going to tell you today, be it in terms of strategy and execution, what you know is immaterial, who you are matters. So friends, the first topic is all that it has been expected of us in the organization, in the families, between our friends is that we are expected to be nicer. Well, not because someone is offering us a job or we want to be in the good books of, you know, a person A, B, or C, but rather because it needs to be the, the genuine character of a particular person. And only that makes everything a better place. So say, for example, you're interviewing with Microsoft, Google, Salesforce, or a, any of the other leading industry, a leading company in automotive, manufacturing, healthcare, you name it. One of the first aspect is, am I a nice person? Am I the kind of person that someone would want to sit down and talk with? So it doesn't, it, uh, well, today colleges or universities or schools for that matter do not teach what it is to be nice, you know. Uh, so step one, Friends, we've got to be nicer. Forget about running a larger organization. Forget about strategy. Forget about execution and stuff. Question one, am I a nice person? Am I that person that someone wants to sit down and have a conversation with? So what is it? What does it mean being nice? It's not just being humble or, well, it's going to be a combination of different traits. But at least... The aspect of being nice is all about, well, carrying a true identity of ourselves and having a conversation in a way that we do not offend the other person. So when you have a conversation, so how to have that kind of a conversation? How to have that kind of a conversation is by not gossiping, not talking ill of others, not being negative. And you know, there's, there's an interesting talk uh, by Celeste Headley, where she talks about ways of 10 different uh, steps to have an interesting conversation. So that's a good place to look at. I'm going to send you uh, that simple notes that I prepared after this to the professor, and maybe he can share with the rest of you. So the first 15 minutes of this discussion, there's only one topic that we've been through. Friends, let's try and be nice to each other, right? And what is the second topic? So we are only going to focus on very little things today as part of this conversation. So when you wake up every morning, so the, uh, when you wake up every morning, the first little thing that you can do is making up your bed. So there's this Admiral William, uh, there's a US Navy Admiral, uh, Mr. William, who talks about making up your bed every single morning and how it is important for a very successful life. So this is in fact a attribute or, or a trait that is being evaluated within the Navy SEALs in the United, uh, in the United States. So what, what is being expected is when you, when you wake up every single morning, are you the kind of person who could make up your bed before going to the next routine part of your life, maybe brushing your teeth or uh, doing your daily hygienic uh, routine. 
So there is a critical uh, aspect to this, uh, to his book, which talks about making up your bed every morning. Is if you cannot be sincere and truthful in for little things in life, how can somebody expect you to be sincere and truthful for the larger things in life? So everybody's day starts with that one little thing, and that is all about making your bed. So beginning this conversation, we started talking about, you know, being nicer people to each other. And the other little thing, how can I make up my bed every single morning? Friends, if you have a bad day and you're returning home, your bed is already made up. At least you go back and sleep in peace in a bed that you already made. When you finish that one little thing, when you accomplish that one little thing in the morning, that is a preamble for the rest of the accomplishments that will be laid out before you for the rest of the day. So, all right, so I'll try to be nice, you say. I'm gonna make up my bed. And then what? What does it mean to the real world? So today when you start approaching things, you know, uh, Simon Sinek, uh, who is who, who's a very famous author and speaker, uh, he writes in his book called Start With Why. So now uh, the third point that I would like to talk to you about is how do you approach things? So uh, Simon says, whenever you approach, uh, whenever you're presented with a content, whenever you're presented with a subject, how are you expected to approach is by asking three questions. Why am I doing it? How am I doing it? And what am I doing? It? What, what is that I'm doing? Say for example, you're taking a course on management 101, for example. So the first question that we try and ask ourselves is why am I expected to learn this coursework? And then comes the next part, how? And then comes the next part, what? So Simon says this is an interesting approach to start defining your answers, to start defining your content when you present to your uh, colleagues, your, your, your student friends, your, your professors, your university, etc. So most of our answers these days, well, when it comes to university, we are being expected to write pages after pages. So I did my uh, bachelor's in engineering and I'm uh, guessing most of you doing your MBA today would have had your bachelor's in engineering or bachelor's, or bachelor's on another paper. And irrespective of the fact whether it is Anna University or any other uh, state-run university, is the, the, the way the uh, system has been asked, the system has been designed as, you know, you're, you're expected to write a 16 mark answer for three pages to even qualify for a 16 mark or you're being expected to write uh, two pages for an eight mark and so on. So what I'm trying to suggest is uh, the way our curriculum is designed is asking us to be elaborate, is asking us to be detailed, which is one part of the story. But the moment you enter the corporate world, the entire idea changes. You're no longer expected to be elaborate. Rather, you're expected to be very precise. And one of the techniques that you can apply on how you could be exactly precise in delivering your content is by trying to answer these three questions respect of the content you're trying to present. And this is also a good evaluation metric uh, for a person himself or herself to have a certain clarity on why we are doing a certain, uh, why we are doing a certain thing. So when it comes to projects, when it comes to uh, presentations, if we are able to articulate our ideas, our content, basically on these three areas, then it gives a very convincing, you can anticipate a response 
that is very convincing and you would have covered a lot of grounds for no questions to be asked further so i'm, I'm just because i'm not narrating my screen i'm going to suggest you a lot of tips that i've heard that i've seen maybe you could take notes mark those uh, topics that you could go back and so uh, there is an interesting content that talks about how amazonians like so there is a certain guideline laid out by amazon to all of their employees and suggesting how they are expected to articulate their content so these days you are expected to be very precise as i said so be it emails be it presentations uh, be it conversation you are expected to get to the point then and there so if i start adding adjectives say for example if i'm saying okay she is a beautiful girl or he is a handsome boy now the the moment you start adding adjectives to your sentences to your phrases it also becomes very subjective what is beautiful what is being handsome therefore what what uh, organizations like amazon or google the way they are encouraging their employees to write and articulate content is by stating facts stating numerical uh numerical uh, evidences on statements that they are making so again we are talking about how do we articulate content we saw the the way to present content is by answering the questions why how and what and the other aspect of articulating your content is by trying to avoid adjectives to your sentences well it might sound very simple it might sound you know i'm a management i'm a management school student and what's the whole point of even talking about all these little things and we're talking about these little things because this is what we see we or we do miss irrespective of the background the student has whether he's a student graduating from a university in india or a student graduating from a university elsewhere in europe for example so these are all the common things that we are expecting at least at the um, at the minimum level for a person to be able to cope up with this regular and routine tasks so th the moment we are able to uh, articulate these content we are also able to ask the right questions to people who are articulating that content back so uh, there is something called a so what test no matter whatever phrase or paragraph or a sentence that you start writing you can always put them through a a, a technique called a so what test so if i'm saying my name is raj so you can put that through a so what test your name is raj so what so when you try asking that question against the content you're trying to present be it to your interviewers or be it to any audience you could start looking at the ideas that you're trying to narrate in a very different way so the moment you put a sentence to a so what test it would answer a very typical question it would answer whether the statement is even worthy enough to be delivered or not delivered so again so far in the, the in the last 20 minutes of the conversation we were talking about you know what is more important as we finish our schooling and we are trying to enter into the uh, corporate world in the job market or becoming an entrepreneur what what are the things that are quite important the first thing is being nice to each other first of all am i the kind of person that someone would want to sit down and have a conversation with the second part that we were talking about is how little things matter you know a little thing like how you as a person making up your bed the first accomplishment of your day would determine the rest of the course of your day and then the third thing that we were talking about is how do you present your content we were talking about you always ask the first three questions why what and how 
to any kind of narrative that you have that you that you've got to present to your professor as a teacher and you could also fine tune them by putting them through a so what test so so far these are all the three major grounds that we started covering and i'm also going to uh, narrate to you an a uh, uh, a fourth aspect you know the the fourth aspect of the conversation that i would like to have with you today which is about playing an infinite game so simon sinek uh, again he talks about another interesting topic this is perhaps something you've not already learned or heard if not would really suggest you to uh, when you go back how take a moment to uh, you know examine and listen to this content so he's talking about playing an infinite game friends today the industry is completely transformed earlier we used to play industries were playing finite games in finite games say for example consider a game like soccer or consider a game like cricket in a uh, if you uh, equate this to a finite game it essentially means you know who your players are you know what the rules of the game is and you know what is that particular target you are pursuing against if there is a match going on between india and pakistan then it is a finite game when india battles second or uh, pakistan battles first however you want to put it we all know the players involved we all know the rules of the game and we all know the target we are pursuing after but today industries have are moving away from finite games and we are moving to something called infinite games so uh, in infinite game there are players known and there are players unknown you do not have a fixed target you have a moving target and the rules of the game is not clearly known so what is this infinite game all about it's all it, it's all about the experience of playing then it is about the target so how does it equate to the corporate world how does it equate to the to an enterprise to an industry so if i look at if you if you look microsoft and google as to a market leaders in in you know in the software business or in the search engine business so today there is no fixed goal as such when they lay out the vision and strategy for the this is where your strategy gets into picture so this is where uh, positions in uh, organizations like uh, you know mckinsey deloitte or a uh, price waterhouse scoopers or any other larger management consulting companies uh, who help other companies lay out their strategy this is what they are busy with in identifying so what is that one dot on the horizon what is that one vision that a company needs to pursue after so for microsoft if you look at the vision that they have it is empowering every person and organization to achieve more i do not know from the top of my head what the uh, vision from google is but it needs i, I would believe it is some, somewhere associated to search and maybe they are also talking about a cost which is a dot on the horizon so today microsoft or google their immediate vision or their immediate goal is not beating each other up it is about staying in the game so i work for an agricultural organization so netherlands is the world's second largest agricultural exporter in the world and if you look at it the first agricultural exporter in the world is united states which is roughly about 250 times larger than the country of netherlands so you can already see what kind of gap we have here but as a organization our ambition is not to defeat the next uh, partner in the competition today uh, today we do not even treat anybody as competition today we are talking more about how could we work better together how could we play to our strengths how could we stay longer in the game friends today disruptions are so so uh, rapid uh, maybe you're way too younger to know about 
this taxi company called Fast Track. I do not even know if they are existing anymore. So the entire idea of hiring a taxi by taking a phone call, dialing and asking them to uh, come to your address, giving them directions, left, right and center for 15 minutes is no longer happening anymore. That entire industry is disrupted with the introduction of technology. So that's where we will start talking about your, uh, the influence of IT on the business side. So slowly we are, slowly we are touching upon uh, from little topics, we are moving away to how they actually uh, have an effect on the real world industries. So again, circling back uh, to the point, the fourth point that we were talking about is how do we play infinite games? So like I told you, uh, companies like Microsoft, companies like Google, or the agricultural organization that I'm representing. So there is at least one thing that is common with all of these organizations in today's world. So today, nobody is moving towards a singular fixed target. The entire idea is we are able to play the game in the longer run. Friends, at a certain point in time, when your bank balance goes six figure and seven figures, the entire ambition, you know, it is not about how much money have we accumulated. It's not about the assets, wealth, properties. It's all about the experience that we were able to gather so far. Well, I see hands going up. I think it's going to be another five or 10 minutes and then I'm going to conclude my content and then we will start taking questions if that is all right with you. Because this uh, event does not give us the convenience of an open classroom where we are able to see each other face to face. I just think this is more efficient. So, uh, so far we spoke about these four topics, right? Um, the other one, so there are two more topics to cover, and then I'm going to give you a sneak peek of how uh, IT matters, you know, in the in, in business and what kind of effects do they have, and what you as a management student, uh, what is interesting for you as a management student to be aware of as you step into the corporate world uh, in terms of understanding the business and IT aspects of it. So. Um, the fifth point that we need to talk that we're going to talk about today is your entire success. Well, everybody gives a formula for success. Well, there is no fixed formula. There is no accredited standard uh, result proven technique that this is how success is going to work, but there are multiple perspectives. So uh, one of the uh, other uh, professor that I was listening to yesterday, I think his name is Patrick Winston. Uh, he's a professor in, uh, in MIT, and he was delivering a content where he was talking about how your inherent success is a function of your knowledge, uh, how much do you practice having that knowledge, and what your inherent talent, talent is. So he says your success could be a function of K, P, T. So knowledge, practice, and talent. So say, for example, I am trying to learn piano. So there is a lot of theoretical knowledge around learning music. So you need to know how to read your score sheets. You need to know uh, which notes to hide, hit when, which notes to hit where, and uh, so on. So there is a lot of theories around a particular topic like music. So this is the knowledge part of it. But just because I know the theory, uh, it doesn't make me an expert on that field. The next obvious thing that gets into the table is how much do I practice with that knowledge? That's why people, I, the, that's the natural effect of uh, gaining more experience. You're being expected to be good at something and eventually you're being paid accordingly. So, uh, so the point coming back to the topic is the inherent success of a person usually becomes a combination of the knowledge he has, um, the, the amount of practice that he puts on the table with the knowledge that he has on hand and the inherent talent. Certain people are very musical in nature. So when they start uh, 
accumulating that knowledge. And when they start putting that into practice, then their inherent talent gets into play. And then that proves, I mean, that paves their success path. But no matter what, to be successful, be it in management, be it in strategy, be it in execution, in any aspect of business that you're gonna choose. Friends, three things would matter. One is your subject matter. So that's the theory. And how much do you practice with that theory? And what is that inherent talent that you have, right? So let's say if I want to teach somebody and I have a lot of content in my head and I have a lot of practice, industry, uh, industry, oriented practice with that content but if i do not have the ability to teach that talent to go stand up on the stage share my ideas with people then the chances of me trying to be a successful teacher is you know getting on the decline side of the story so therefore these three things most of the time help you determine the success of a particular trajectory you're choosing all in all, in conclusion, friends, what matters the most is uh, in any aspect of business, be it IT, be it marketing, be it sales, be it human resource, any particular field that you will pick up within a business organization, all that matters is what kind of value are you bringing to your end customers? So normally, uh, you know, pe people talk about Eventually, in an organization, these are the three things that get into picture. People, process, tools, and data. This is what anyone will be associated with for most of their working hours. And all of these are good for nothing if they do not create value to the end user, who is your customer. So the entire effort that an organization is investing be it on uh, marketing, sales, IT, or whatever uh, business function, be it, it is all about creating value for the end user. Today, I'm a farming company, and if I'm not able to, uh, if I'm not able to bring better apples and better uh, flowers to my farmers, then the investments that I'm making as an organization in these uh, business functions is not yielding me good result so moral of the story is be it it or be it any business function it is fulcrum towards one key aspect which is value creation so what again going back to the previous line of topics that we touched upon if we try and answering uh, the question why am i doing this certain project how am i doing it and what am i doing it for would pretty much determine the value creation aspect of the whole idea. So, so far in the 40 minutes of our conversation, I'm just going to replay one more time. We started talking about how being nice is very important. We were, we were saying how little things matter in life the most, just like making up your bed every morning. And then we were talking about how do you approach a particular business idea or how do you approach a particular narrative by answering the questions why how and what and then we were talking about how do you play an infinite game how competition is no longer you know on the table it's all about how who stays in the game longer today a, a digital camera company like kodak you know is uh, is completely out of business at least uh, by and large in the area where they were so so uh, where they were so so reputed for that is making cameras and because they were refusing to adopt to a digital uh, strategy but they but they stick with their camera films which most of you wouldn't even have ever seen it so uh, again the idea is how do you play an infinite game and what makes you more successful irrespective of the industry that you choose? Then we started talking about how your entire success at times becomes a combination of your knowledge, how much you practice with it, and what kind of inherent talent you have. And bottom line, the final idea that we started narrating is 
Uh, irrespective of any business function that you choose today, it is all about value creation for your end customer. If your customer is a farmer, what value you as a person and an organization are creating for that farmer. So this is the whole idea of any business function that you can imagine or any business that you can imagine. This is one narrative. Friends, again, now uh, one, of the key, uh, one of the key idea that I was uh, expected to bring to the table is how digital uh, is important to a business, how IT is important to a business. Well, if, if, you, if I should put it in simple terms, Friends, all that is important is your customer and you serve your customer in different aspects. When you start a company, it is mostly about you're either selling a product or you're selling a service. And now you want to take that product and your service from your garage, from your bedroom to the customer who is elsewhere outside your bedroom. And one of the uh, tooling technique to take that idea from your bedroom to the rest of the world is where information technology gets into picture. Then you either create a website, you create an app, and then you start advertising in several social media channels. And then that goes further. Uh, there is a segmentation happening. We try identifying who could be interesting, uh, who could be an interesting customer for your product, who could be an interesting customer for your service. So this is where IT starts slowly crawling and start blending into your business. So. Today, IT and business are not two different things. They are, you know, going hand in hand. They are blended together. Today, we call digital. So all that people talk about digital transformation everywhere, talking about engaging your customers, empowering your employees. It's about optimizing operations. Right? There are too many jargons involved here. But then the entire idea is, I need to create value. And if I need to create value for my customer, what tooling can I use? Sometimes that tooling is simply a Facebook, Instagram, and a TikTok advertisement. Or sometimes a tooling is like creating a, a website or an app. And when, it, when you go a little further, when organizations become large, then we start having different enterprise systems, what Gartner calls it as systems of records, they get into picture. So you can read about this Gartner. Uh, uh, there's a Gartner paper that talks about system of record, system of innovation, system of engagement. And this basically talks about how IT uh, systems get into uh, business and how they evolve and transform at different rates. All right. So again, now in some, we, we're trying to break down a larger problem into simple piece and we're following one step after the other, isn't it? So like I said, you have an idea in your bedroom, you want to take it to the rest of the world. And there are certain tooling that get into picture. So it can be advertisements, uh, uh, which is again, IT. It could be again, apps or uh, websites, or it can, when organizations grow larger, then you have ERP systems, you have CRM system. And enterprise resource planning is nothing but how your business processes are converted into a standard uh, uh, an enterprise resource planning module. So it's nothing but a larger computer with different modules that talks about your uh, business processes. Say, for example, your business is cooking. Then all your recipes become a business process. And after you cook, you have to take that food from your kitchen to somebody. So we are talking about supply chain. And when, so uh, 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 a cooked product goes out of your kitchen to the end customer, so that's supply chain. And somebody is going to order that cooked product, let's say it's biryani or something. So when a person orders that biryani, then there is an order and uh, somebody pays cash for that order. So it's an OTC becomes a business process, order to cash, supply chain, logistics. So all of these business processes get embedded on a larger computer called uh, which sometimes is called SAP, which sometimes is called uh, Dynamics. And there are a lot of ERP players in the market. So this is one larger system in business. The other, uh, I, uh, the other systems that you will come across very often are uh, CRM systems. And there are a lot of idle tooling uh, that is on the table. So a CRM is a customer relationship management system, which has records of customers. So these are all larger systems that 
govern a part of an enterprise or a business. And then there is this uh, aspect of digital, um, there's this aspect of digital which plays a pivotal role in every organization where you bring your customer closer to your business with limited friction. If I want to order biryani, I would like to go open my app like Swiggy and I would like to place my order and in the next 20 minutes, I would like to have that delivered home. But if you look at the app, it brings different partners together, right? different restaurants together. It, bring, it, brings a payment, it brings a payment gateway to the table. So it integrates different partners all with one fundamental idea where they have to simplify and customer experience by bringing that product and service, which is in somebody's bedroom, rather to the rather directly to the uh, customer's residence, for example. So again, what I'm trying to emphasize here is when it comes to strategy, when it comes to execution, when it comes to IT, all that it is required is just one week for you to understand when you get into the real uh, when, when you get into the real world, you know. So from, from your classrooms to the real world, all these topics would take you hardly a week to get familiar with. That's about it. What is more important is the topics that we, you know, we were having a conversation earlier about. How do you be a nicer person? How to be truthful and how to be sincere with little things. Um, and, and these are the stuff that matters the most. And maybe with... Um, this closing thoughts, I would like to recommend to you, there is someone called David Rubinstein. Uh, he, he does a lot of interviews with a lot of CEOs of larger companies. It's a, uh, I, I, I think to any management student, I would largely recommend you watching his shows. The shows are on YouTube. And that gives you a perspective of how chief executive officers of different leading industries give a perspective about uh, you know, how they run their own businesses. And I would really, really like you to take a look at that. And there's someone called Captain Raghu Raman. Uh, he he talked, there is a wonderful talk about him where he uh, says how, what you can learn from the street vendors in India about business transformation. Friends, today, all that matters is change how fast and how adaptable we are to circumstances that are changing around us. So sitting in a classroom, taking notes to things have changed into a Zoom call. So changes keep coming and how adaptable we are determines a lot of productivity going forward. So again, what was I wanting to say? I was trying to refer you to Captain Rahu Raman and he was having a talk about how, what you can learn from the streets of India in terms of business transformation. So as long as you're able to change, as long as you're able to transform, that is all that matters. So if I'm as adaptable and as formable as a liquid like water, then it doesn't matter to which container I'm being poured through. I will be able to adapt to those changes. So this is the whole idea about at least in my opinion, what strategy and execution or what IT has to do with anything in the business world. Uh, outside this, I, I would like to present one final closing thought, then maybe we will take the flow for questions. So uh, friends today, uh, like Professor mentioned earlier, there are also a lot of faculties who have joined this call. I'm going to narrate very, very small story. So there was this one salesman who was trying to sell a product. And he was working with this large customer. He was trying to, uh, he was nurturing the customer. He was ready to sell this product. It's been over three months. He was almost going to sell it. But at the last neck of the moment, the customer said, I'm sorry, I do not need this product any longer. Now the salesman goes back to his manager to say, you know, hey, I've been working with this customer for three months, you know, to sell this product. I really tried super hard. I really tried my best. And it's been after three months, you know, the customer said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to buy your product. You know what? I can only take the horse to the water, but I cannot force the horse to drink water. But this is what the salesman said to his manager, to which the manager responded. 
Son, your job in the first place was never to make the horse drink the water. Your job was to make the horse thirsty. That's what the manager said. So like I, what I wanted to share with the professors and faculties here is maybe there, are, there is a similar complaint, you know, you, there, you bring so much of content, there's so much of effort being put towards the student community, but it is up to them to, you know, eventually take it up or not take it up. But uh, faculty, friends, respected professors, well, again, the world is changing. The entire idea is not whether we are able to make them consume that content. Is the, the entire idea is whether we are able to make our uh, student community feel thirsty to take that content up. So with these final thoughts, I would like to close my uh, session and leave, get the floor back to you. And I will take questions or if there's any feedback, I'm all yours. So oh, thank you, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it was interesting, uh, you know, uh, speech. And uh, uh, participants, if you want to ask any question, unmute yourself and directly post it to our speaker. So there is a question in chat, uh, sir. Yes, I'm looking at it. I Hello, doubt. sir. I have a doubt in a recent happening in Facebook or any social media sites. There's a lot of life coach, success coach, and trainers addressing steps and system to become rich and successful, conducting webinar, mastermind groups, and community. My question is: Are these people authentic, really helping the needy people, or is it just a marketing tactic to pull the people for their richness? I think anyone who is promising health, wealth, richness by, all, by first asking money, well, that's not the first place you should go to. I think uh, if that was indeed successful, everybody would have become a millionaire and billionaire. So I don't think uh, that's even an avenue to look at. Please don't. Uh, people who are genuine with their content normally do not ask money for it. At the end of the day, all that matters is your effort and you know, what you... Yes, sir. So any other questions, participants? Thank you, sir. Uh, the session was really good. Uh, you made it uh, like, you know, uh, life skills. It was not on uh, one particular thing. You just read on life skills. So, which is uh, very much needed for everyone. It's either faculty or students. Uh, thank you, sir. Any other questions? I hope there is no any questions, ma'am. Yes, uh, we'll, uh, we'll close. Uh, is it okay? Uh, so, we'll close the... Uh, so yeah, absolutely. If there are no yeah. further questions, then we'll give people their time back. That's right. Okay. So thank you, participants. So thank you for being with us for the last uh, five days and hope the sessions were useful to you. And uh, you'll be getting a mail, uh, you'll be getting a link uh, for your certificates. Thank you all. Thank you. Anything Anything else? Thank you. Answer? Thank you, Rajkumar, sir. Thank you very much for, in spite of your busy schedule, you joined with us today. Um, thank you once again.